Hello all, and welcome to this Let's Play. My name is LPK, and today we're gonna play Europa Barbarum. So, we're gonna, this is a modification for Rome Total War. We're playing this in the anticipation for Rome 2 and Europa Barbarum 2. So, the faction we're playing today is Hayastan. It's a faction based on horse archers, armored cataphracts, Cataphract Archer and some decent medium infantry and mountain infantry. So we have one province here and we're gonna try to build a real empire spanning different continents. So let us get started with this. We're gonna be playing on medium difficulty for battles and campaign like it is recommend, recommend, recommended by the EB team who made this mod. They know best, of course, so let's, let's get started. Yeah, I know, the loading screens always take a little bit of time. <laughs> However, this is the coolest thing about Europa Barbarum. Even on the loading screen, you get tons of information. Like right now, these were the rulers of some of the kingdoms that were there. So, okay. On what rules will we be playing by? So, rule number one is no cheat codes. Rule number two is faction leader and faction heir have preferences to lead armies. Only after they are leading the armies, the others can start leading the armies. Rule number three is all ma male, or sort of every character that comes of age, has to go to the capital to receive an education for at least two years. This will become more relevant after we start building and we get a school built in our capital. Rule number four is, four is we're not going to exploit the game too much, so you'll not see me running with the full army of archers or horse archers, so we use balanced armies. So let us see our realm right now. So this is our small kingdom. Runs through these rivers. Lake Van, Lake Seven, goes to the Caspian Sea. Okay, so our situation right now is really, really bad. Okay, this is the coolest thing about Europa Barbarum, or I'm gonna call it EB from now on. It's easier for everyone. This is the script. You have to activate it every time you play this game. So, after activating this, so let's look at our kingdom. So let's look, start with our financial situation here. Okay, from what I can see is things are not going so well in the kingdom now. We're making a pretty hefty loss here. So that is why we're gonna start conquering. But first, before we do that, I'm gonna disband one of my cavalry units. Uh, because I don't see no reason to have an extra cavalry unit that has an upkeep of 700. This is only a drain on the economy. And since my I already have two generals, which are basically tanks. So I don't really see the point of having an extra cavalry unit. And I can use the money somewhere else. So we're gonna disband our medium Armenian medium cavalry, or it's called Aspet Hitzalazor. <laughs> Even as a native Armenian, those names are sometimes really difficult to pronounce. So good knowing you, old friend. Onward. So my first target is to unite the whole of the Caucasus under my rule in EB. The developers have put in uh, something really, really fun for Hayastan or Armenia. Uh, the point is that you create, you conquer the whole of Caucasus, then you form the Greater Armenia. And only then you can use Armavir as your hometown. Right now you have uh, this as a third tier government building. This is also one of the fun things of this game. You have different kind ty types of government depending on how far you are from your homelands. So, 
for Hayastan, for Hai, the homelands are, if I remember 100% correctly, Armavir, Anikama, and down here, Karkatiokerta. It's a mouthful. So, these three will be our home tier provinces, and other provinces nearby will be our second tier, and then the rest of the map is third tier or an allied government, then you will get a client king who will rule in your place. So, to get to transform Armavir into a first tier and the bastion of our power, where we can recruit our best native units, our cataphracts, our horse archer cataphracts, our best horse archers, we need to start conquering the rest of the Caucasus. So, right now, we're not in the best economical shapes, however, the Caucasus is a gold mine in this game because of all the mines. Like, every, almost every settlement around me can build a huge mine, so that is why My it is a gold mine. Move out! No more move, sire! And it will be perfect for us to start building our empire, this having this as our foundation of our empire. So, let us check out our diplomacy. So, we are allied with four nations, Arches Seleucia, the Seleucidic Empire, Bactria, Pontos and Pahlava, which are the Parsians. And we are enemies with the Sarmatians. So, first thing I'm gonna do is get a peace tree and some trade rights with the Sarmatians. This will ease up the game a lot and I don't have to worry about the North anymore. So, let's get our yes, Arthashes Sirvanduni, my really cool diplomat, to move ahead and find yes, the Sarmatian settlements. So, this is my capital, Armavir. First and foremost, I'm gonna build road systems. This is my game style. I like playing it slowly and building up the settlements as much as I can. I will be concentrating more on building things less than having too many armies running around. I'm going to be playing with bigger armies and maybe two, three armies depending on the economy and how I feel like playing. So, we're going to build a roads, Janapar. It's going to take us two seasons. So, it's a half a year, six months. So, it's the, the game is four turns instead of two turns like it is in normal or vanilla total roam. So, we're building our road system. So this is the mine I was talking about, the second tier mine, so Khorhank, a deep mine. So this will give me a lot of money, but it will cost me 32,000 to build, which right now I do not have. So while I'm building this, I'm going to recruit some extra units that will help me to make the conquests a lot easier. My liege. Orders? And I will join up my armies to attack Butais. I think three is a little bit too much, and I will recruit only one and leave the rest of the money just as money. And I'm gonna give keep the taxes very high and also invest some in sanit sanity sanitization sanitization and some sewers put it in other ways. This will give me some public health bonus and this will help me to get some good things going. So having done all of this we're gonna have a look at the map. So the map here stretches from all the way to the top of Britain, Ireland, here we got Scandinavia, Norway, Denmark, modern Norway, Denmark, Finland, then here we go to the top points of the Iberian Peninsula, Northern Africa, we go into the Sahara, we got Cardiff here, we got all of Sicily, and here it goes all the way to the Indus Valley. Here we got the Arabian Peninsula with all of its beauty. We got here the Nile Delta. We got here the Nile flowing through. We got Egypt going down to Nubia. Too bad there are no factions down here. That would have been really, really fun, but one can hope for EB2. 
So, our first plan will be to conquer the whole of the Caucasus. Another really cool thing about this mod is how historical it is. So, here we got uh, so much information that it's so splendidly built that everybody should read it. Really. I'm not gonna read it for you guys. Here, you got a great canal built for 3000 years ago. It's like crazy all the information you have here. These are things that really exist in the real world. You got all kind of different kinds of wonders. So much more things going on than in Rome Total War. But let us end our first turn and see what's happening next. Okay, our turn has ended, and let's see what the new season has brought us. Okay! So, we got a war with the Parsians. The Pahlava has declared war on the Selsudic Empire. So, I'm not in the mood of pissing off the biggest empire around, the superpower of our day, so I'm not gonna join this alliance. I'm gonna decline and stay allies with the Celsudics for now. But later on we're gonna f fight each other. So like you can see our alliance has been broken. Uh, I'm gonna adjust the sound for a minute. Oh. Okay, should be better now. Yes. So, other diplomatic information. So, Pontos and Bactria have broken their alliances with the Silsudics. I got some units recruited. Ooh, another fun thing is that in EB there is this thing called Year in History, where all information gives what has happened that year like in 272 BC you get all the information what has happened in that year I'm not gonna read it for you guys if you want to read it just pause the game and you can read all of it it's really interesting and really fun so let us just look like I thought we got 2000 left in the treasury March. Marching armies. we're gonna unite our armies Orders? We're gonna get March, mighty general. We got our factionaire here, Samus. He's gonna be he's one of my favorite characters in EB because every time I play a Sayastan, I conquer a huge empire under his rule. So right now we are Amar in summer. So it's really nice weather, and we're also very well supplied because we're in our own lands. So the moment we're going to go outside of our lands, we're going to be living off our supply train. So then every time our supplies go down, our men will start losing their morale. So that's never a good thing. So let us go back Your to our servant. diplomat and have yes, him move further and try to reach I will speak with them at once. the Sarmatians. Oh, damn it, I forgot my spy. So we got a spy here near Anikama where we can see the whole city, how many units they have. So we're gonna move our spy to Kotais. Moving out of moves, sire. And have him hang out there to my keep an eye out on things. Mighty general. And we're gonna end our turn here. We got a road system in place. So now we can use our armies Sire! to move faster. So we're gonna attack Kotais. 
Besieging and we're gonna besiege them. This is all. Under siege, sir. So this is also another point of the way I play. I never attack cities. I never do sieges. I allow the enemy to attack me. Because I don't really like sieges and fighting in small streets. So I besiege them until they attack me. So in one year, the enemy will either sally forth or die. Or surrender. So next turn, we're gonna have finished our sewer system. Damn it, forgot about my diplomat. Come on, keep walking, keep walking. Okay. So let's see if we can get some ceasefire going on. Perfect. Some trade rights. Things keep getting better and better here. Some map information and ah. Nope. They don't want to give their map information to me. Tough luck. You can only try. Okay, it's winter now. Okay, building finished. Faction announcement. So, like you can see here, the trade has decreased. My units are not well supplied anymore. So, they are losing the plus one morale on the battlefield. So, when you're fighting on your own ground, you'll gain the plus one morale. Or if you're fighting in ground which has high levels of farming, you will agriculture, you will gain also pillaging, you will also gain supplies through that. I'm not sure about that, but pretty sure. Okay, we're not gonna recruit any more units, our economy cannot handle any more. And we got a fairly decent army here, good enough for the beginning, as long as the Celsidic Empire doesn't decide to attack me. So let's end this turn and see. Okay, like you can see here, we're already pillaging here, that is why, like here, you can see that the pillaging going on here, that's one of the reasons why it takes so long for the supplies to go down, because they're pillaging from the land around them, and they're not really using their own supplies to live up. And we have a new character who came of age, Meher and he will be staying in the capital for two years to get an education, so to say, as role-playing purposes. Here is Meher. He already has a tutor and a family retainer. So he gets one personal security and also benefits of a statement and he will get more traits. He's not like his father, he's a bureaucrat, he's youthful. So he seems like a good chap. And our sucky economical situation. Two more turns and those bastards will either surrender or die. Your so, obedient servant. I'm gonna have my diplomat move through modern Ukraine all the way to modern 
Romania and Bulgaria to find one of the coolest factions I know and try to get an alliance with them and also with the Greek states for l later in the game. To hear is to obey. obey. So my goal is to get all the way in this mountain range here. It's a little bit too far it seems. To hear is to obey. Yes, my liege. Your obedient servant. Yes, my liege. No more moves, sir. That's not possible, sire. It's okay. Until there then. Two more turns, so let's end this turn. Okay, it's summer again, and we get here the year in history. If you want to read it, be my guest. I'm not gonna read it for you guys, I know you guys can read. So here, you can see that now my army is rationing, so they're losing minus one morale for all troops. And this is our sucky economical situation, no need to show that again. Okay, one of the really cool things about EB is these little buildings here. So, uh, the resources, this is a vineyard, and you got here... Come in, mines, and then you got here horse breeders, I think. Or I cannot see it, but here you got mines. Here, yeah, precious metal mine. And here you got another vineyard. You got so many, so many different things. Copper mine, copper mine. I'm sorry about the pronunciation. So, next turn, they, you'll either surrender or my eyes die. Are yours. And I'm gonna set up my spy for my next town I'm gonna conquer after this one. So it's gonna be Metzcheta, which is in modern day Georgia. It would more or less be close to modern day Tbilisi, if I'm not mistaken. If I am, please correct me. Moving. So here we got another half a stack of forces there, but nothing to worry. My because we got our tanks here and the strategy I'm using will allow me to use my tanks to its full advantage. So let's push end season. Okay, I forgot about my diplomat. It's gonna take a couple of seconds to have him move all the way to there. And he keeps walking and walking. So he has left the Sarmatian lands and is close to the Crimean, Crimea, however you pronounce it. Okay, so the enemy has decided to sally forth and we're gonna fight the battle on the battlefield. However, I'm gonna stop the first video here. I'll see you guys later.